Don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. So what started out as another double page spread in my volume of the dolls turned into something a little bit more magical. So back to my volume of the dolls and I've got two sets of um, <clears throat> younger cast members today. So Horace, well, I'll name the other two a little bit later on. Um, they've already got names, but I want to explain exactly what I've done today. Um, it's something a little bit different. I started off with these two. Um, and after I tinted the last ones using my um, Faber-Castell pit pens, I thought, I wonder if how easy these are to actually scan into the computer and then tint them on the computer and then print them out again. So that's exactly what I did. I scanned them into my computer uh, and then retinted them. And then as I was doing it, I thought to myself, do you know what? I could add little additions to these characters. I could add little pieces of costume. I could add different things to them, then print them out to use in my volume of the dolls. And in the end, I didn't actually end up using these two apart from just to get the base image. And then as I started adding the bits and pieces to them, a theme started to, uh, to appear, <laughs> as you'll see. As I started to colour the girls in, I thought, I wonder if I could just pop a couple of hats on there. And, and then it, one thing led to another. So this page is gonna be a little bit different because although I'm using Tim Holtz paper dolls, I'm not actually using those particular ones. I'm using the same images, but done in a different way. So I did say this was going to be a little bit magical. So that's exactly what we're gonna start off doing. So I have printed off on my computer to put in the background a picture of Misty Hogwarts. And I've done it at the right size so it's gonna fit across the double page spread. So I think you can already guess where this is going. So I'm going to just rip the rough edges on these images. I don't want them even, I don't want them straight lines, I want them rough and ready. That's what she said. Yes, I know, I know. Right, rough and ready. So just staying as close to the edge as I can because I did size this particularly to fit. And it doesn't matter if that one disappears off at the top because it's almost white anyway. And then again, now I'm right-handed, so I'm tearing from the right. And as I'm doing that, you can see I'm actually getting those feathered edges. If I started tearing the other way, then the rough edges or the feathered edges would be on the opposite side, if you know what I mean. I've explained that before, I think. You can see how we're still getting the rough edges. Okay, so again, And I'm wavering it slightly up and down to make sure that there's no straight edges. Up and Z, down and Z. <laughs> Got in Himmel. Okay, so that should now fit into the center of my page. Now I appreciate this is gonna have to be folded. So what I'm gonna do um, if I can, is kind of fold it first that should fit about there and then glue it in as it is. So and I've got some Aileen's tacky glue but it's not tacky, it's lovely. I'm just going to put a load of that in the background. I'm not bothered about the edges um, being glued down perfectly because I kind of like it when they curl up at the edges a little bit. It adds a little bit more texture to what you're trying to do. And I haven't put any glue right in the middle. What I'm going to try and do is just feed it in 
as close to that center point as I can and then just push it down and I've stuck it in upside down look oh dear god right let's start that again then as close to that center point as we can and let me get a scalpel because they're getting in the way <clears throat> let's just see if we can remove some of those bits I'm just lightly going over that so as not to chew into the page underneath and I've got glue on the page so that should work a little bit better now I probably need to add some more glue fancy not checking yeah fancy not checking which way up your page was saying in the UK what a burke all right so I can get rid of those other bits in a minute all right as close in as we can push it down push 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 There we go. Now we're still getting some of the text showing up underneath, which is fine. Don't mind that at all. There we go. So now, it is thick stuff this, but it, it's a monster to get out. There we go. should do us <clears throat> even though it's kept upside down all right now as I'm pushing it into the page yeah I'm kind of doing it so that we have got that crease Don't mind if it is a little bit creased up. That's fine. That should do us. That's about, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I've got my Misty Hogwarts all glued down. So what I'm gonna do is just leave that for a minute or two to dry and then I can bring in some paint and we can start working on the edges. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now. Most of the wrinkles have actually worked themselves out. So I've brought in some Dina Wakeley Media Paint and I've brought in Night, which is a really, really deep blue. I've brought Elephant because it's not quite gray. Well, it is gray, but it's not black and it's not white. It's somewhere in the middle. And I've brought in Buff because again, it's not white. It's just a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a little bit and I'm gonna put a little bit of that buff just in the top. And then I'm going to just work that paint in with my finger. And we start to just kind of like blend in the image. Add a little bit more. It's also kind of very similar to the page colour, which is great. So while it's still a little bit wet, I've still got some on my finger, I'm going to add in a little bit of that elephant down at the bottom. 
can't believe it's starting to run out. Because I want a darker kind of base at the bottom here. But this is where my characters are going to stand. So this is fine for blending in. Right, let's get some of that night. That's it. And then I can just start working that down. So where there's an obvious line, I'm just working it a bit further down. But that's okay, because that's pretty much where our characters are going to go. So let me just put some, this baby wipe's a bit dry. So just add a little bit more water just to reactivate it again. That's it. Clean fingers. And then while this is still wet, just add a little bit more just to make it a tad more opaque. And I think that's pretty much going to do it. So blended that page into the pages just a little bit more. So it's not quite so obvious, if you know what I mean. And I haven't put the lid back on that properly. We don't want that, do we? No, for sure. Okay, so let's get that dry. And then we can start playing. Okay, so. That's where my little characters are going to stand. Obviously I'm not going to use those exact ones. So <clears throat> I want to add some stenciling up here in the top and down here a bit towards the sides. Just to kind of add a few more layers into that. So we've got the Hogwarts in the background. We've got that disguising paint just hiding the top and the bottom of the print. So let's put those out of the way. And I've brought in my or I've got out my um, Roundel stencil because I want to add some dots in this top corner and I'm going to use the same colour paint as we used before. So I'm going to use that night, which is that really, really dark blue, just for consistency. Um, craft sponge, already cut up. So I'm just going to load that sponge up and then just dab through just to kind of create a bit of a corner effect. Probably couldn't see that, could you? Because it was off camera. Let's try again with this side. So just adding some of that night through the stencil. will just give us that kind of corner effect there. But what I also want to do is just lightly go across the top with what's left. But just lightly. to one side because we're pretty much done with that. Clean off my fingers because I've got some on. Just 
Let's get rid of that off the mat. Okay. Okay, so I've just let that dry for a minute or so. I didn't actually say what I was doing. Sorry, should have done. But yeah, let that dry for a few minutes. And now I want to bring in and just add in some texture just here towards the sides where it's a bit dark. <clears throat> it just needs lifting a little bit. And to do that, I'm bringing in one of my oldest stencils, um, not my design, this is one of the oldest ones that I've owned. It's so gunked up with paint and stuff these days. Um, this is the Harlequin stencil from TCW. About the time that I actually bought another one, I think, because this one is almost had it. So I'm going to bring out that elephant and I'm going to put some grey just into the background. So load up my craft sponge, get it worked in and then I'm going to start adding in some of those fabulous kind of rough harlequin shapes. Well, it's a harlequin, diamond shapes really. Just to kind of lighten that foreground a little. Now that's at that side and then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to turn it upside down lay it back down and then bring it in from this side as well. It's a bit difficult because my pages are a bit a little bit buckly but that's fine. So it doesn't matter that the shapes are all uneven because that's the whole point. I'm coming in right the way across the bottom because this also will help to ground our little characters. That should do. There we go. Yeah, I'm liking that. So I'll get that dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so the next step that I want to do now that those little harlequins are dry and that background is starting to break up quite nicely is I'm going to add some splatters, unusually before I've actually placed my characters. So I'm going to bring in that buff again because I don't want to use white white, it's going to be too stark. So I'm just going to add a little bit of buff paint, some water, from my spritz bottle and then I have a fan brush. So just mix in that paint, get it nice and loose and then hoping that's going to be that's kind of soaking in up there and disappearing so I might have to do it a little bit thicker let's just get it dried off and we'll find out whether that's actually worked or not or whether it's going to disappear okay so it's dried now but some of the ones that I did up here have disappeared altogether we've got some really kind of floaty bits up here um, and these ones down here at the bottom kind of adds a little kind of what they call a bokeh effect but not quite as opaque as I'd wanted so I'm just going to add a little bit more of that paint and I've just used elephant there haven't I that's the wrong colour get off it was the buff that I wanted that's it so I'm going to add a little bit more paint to the water mixture that will mean that I get it a little bit more opaque than it was before. So we've got the first lot. Now this lot. Should stay brighter. In theory. Right, let's get that dried off. 
Okay, they're all dried. Now that's much better. I've got those floaty little dust motes in the air. But because we've got ones in the background that are actually faded, it does actually give it a little bit of depth, I think, possibly. Anyway, let's bring in our two characters, or two sets of characters. There we go. Now, as I was saying before, as I was starting to hand tint these on the computer, I thought that they would look really, really good as kind of um, Harry Potter-esque kind of characters. So young kids ready to go to Hogwarts, which is exactly what I thought I would do with this one. So hand tinted them and then added some bits and pieces to them. So Horace, I'll say Horace. Now, obviously the girls also need naming, but because in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, people tend to have interesting names made up of maybe some cat sometimes fantastical names like Lucius and things like that but then they've got really ordinary names too like Harry and Ron <laughs> and Fred and George and surnames which are kind of really traditional like Longbottom and Potter and Baker so you'd have a mixture if somebody's got like sometimes in the wizarding world, if you read the books. They've got like a fantastical first name. They've usually got a very, very ordinary last name. Or they've got a very ordinary last name. Oh, I've just said that the right way around. Or whichever way around anyway. So this is what I've renamed my characters to fit in with the Harry Potter world. So Horace becomes Horace Wormwood. With his trunk and his cat. And the girls, I'm happy to introduce, Morticia and Lucretia Crabtree. Perfect Harry Potter names, or Wizarding World names, even if I do say so myself. So, and I think the pointy hats go with the spires of the school really, really well. And I think the page just, they pop off the page. Really, really cool. So I need to get them glued into place. Now I've printed these on my printer, which is my, I'll put it on the screen here because I know people ask me all the time what printer I use and what the ink is. Um, and I don't know whether you can get the ink for other printers. I don't know. I just know that the Epson one that I've got, the WF2630, which is the Workforce 2630, takes, um, the 16 cartridges, or 16XL, if you're feeling extravagant, which has the Dura Bright ink, which makes it permanent when dry, which is different to other inkjet printers, uh, or some inkjet printers. It's the only one I've ever known that's actually permanent. Um, but also because I've printed these off on the printer, I don't get any shine. There's, there's no shine to these at all, they're matte which is perfect for what I want. Okay, so now that I've gone through that, see, I had to write the names on the back, look. Horace Wormwood, Morticia and Lucretia Crabtree. I love it, absolutely love those names. When they just come to you, they just come to you. It's brilliant. Um, okay, so what glue are we going to use to stick these down with? What have I got left? Because I was actually running out of um, glue, so let's have Dilution's Creative Diary Glue Stick. I've still got a drawer full of these. Um, they're really inexpensive. Um, very, very inexpensive, which is why I bought absolutely loads of them. Um, I don't tend to use them that often. Right, scratch paper. Let's stick Horace down first. Let's see if we can get the lid off. There we go. So I'll just gently rub the glue stick all over. And then move my scratch paper out of the way and bring him in. And I'm gonna stand him right in the center of the page. Now normally I offset to the, to the right my characters on this side. As you notice, they're not exactly in the middle, but always over to the edge. But this one, I'm gonna put in the middle. Oh, and the cat's called Tiddles, by the way. I 
Okay, I don't think I had any glue there. Oh, dropsy. So one of my customers that I've been speaking to this morning um, has either a dog, I can't remember if it was a dog or a cat or whatever, called Crumble. And I thought that was a really, really good name. The other one is called Molly. So it's got Molly and Crumble. I thought that was a great steampunk name, Molly Crumble. <laughs> it's great. Love it. We've got a little bit of glue, well that's okay. And then we'll stick the Crabtree Sisters pretty much on the same plane, about there. Again, this glue should disappear when it's dry, so there's no problems. Look at that. Love it. We need to add a little bit of grounding just under the feet. So to do that, we're going to do the same that I've normally done. Is just add a little bit of the Stabilo All. Just put a real light amount down. Just underneath their feet. And then with a water brush. Have I got a water brush with water in? Yes, I do. Is that water coming out? There it is, yeah. I'll just activate that. Now, I should actually do it that way around because I can push it once it's activated down the page. and across and then the same again underneath and down the page and if I think it's a little bit too dark just go back in and just remove some of it But I think that's going to do. Just like so. Let's get that dried. And in the words of Arnie, I'll be back. Okay, ground in is all dry. So just to finish this page off, I'm just going to add in a little quote, which I've printed off obviously on the computer and again I've just ripped it like I did um, with the Hogwarts background so there's no kind of uneven oh sorry straight edges and I'm just going to stick that up in the sky at the top there and then I think with a black pen I'm just going to do a really scribbly kind of border around it, kind of following the lines of it. Ready for school. And then just to finish off, I might just add a little doodly border little scribbles and then just join it up Sometimes, you know, you, you don't need to add a border to a page, sometimes you do. It's just how that page makes you feel 
as to whether or not you think a border is necessary. A lot of the times I don't bother, but I'd say probably, I don't know, 60-65% of the times I will add a border to it. I put the pen away, look, and I've not even signed it. So I've got da, 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 a sign there, and I've no idea what today's date is. It's the 25th, isn't it? It's exactly a month since Christmas. 2021, 2021, 25, 120, there we go. And that's it. So that is my sort of Harry Potter-ish um, tribute after going to the Harry Potter experience in London a couple of weeks ago. Um, just as I was doing, I'm colouring those characters in, I just thought, do you know what, they'd look really cool. Um, I might even just go back and add some stripes onto the girl's socks. Just because. <laughs> Just because we can. Because that's what we do. We do things because we can. And because it makes us smile. Shall I give the other girl the stripy socks too? Yeah, why not? He's got stripy socks in already, but that was part of the actual original image. There we go, they kind of all match now, don't they? <laughs> so, I hope you've enjoyed watching that kind of whimsical, a little bit magical, uh, at Journal Page come together. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. Just a bit of fun on a Saturday afternoon. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.